Back on Tennis Channel Live, our own John Wertheim tweeted yesterday working on the assumption, and now it is a fact that the Olympics will be moved to 2021. You wonder which tennis players will delay retirement, whether it will again fall between Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. Bethany Maddox-Sands responded saying, hey, it was her birthday yesterday. By the way, happy birthday, Beth. Uh, was not planning on retiring, John. This is the first time in history that the start of the Olympics will be delayed to another year. The official statement from the Tokyo Olympics today as we welcome in back Paul Lindsay. And John, you've got a new studio, many leather-bound books behind you. It, it even <laughs> smells of rich mahogany through the Skype. You like that better than the plain white backdrop <laughs> yesterday. We're going to have a new backdrop every day just to keep things fresh. Uh, John, so the news is official now with the Olympics postponing a year until 2021. What does this do? Obviously, we don't know. They haven't uh, set a specific date. What does this do to the tennis calendar? Well, you, you just said it. I mean, the fact that we know there's going to be this postponement, but we don't know the date. I think that freezes a lot of people. There are a lot of logistical issues here. And... I hope we're talking about this a year from now. I mean, I hope this is optimistically going to go off. We don't know about eligibility. We don't know if this is going to conflict, these new rescheduled Olympics, if they're going to conflict with any of the three majors that are held between Memorial Day and Labor Day. I mean, really optimistically, in theory, we now have a bit of a gap on the summer 2020 calendar. Um, I, I think we would all be very thankful if that would be filled anywhere. But Again, we knew this was coming. It was just completely implausible that these Olympics could get pulled off this summer in late July and early August. But we don't know a whole lot about how it's going to look in 2021 until we have a date, Steve. Yeah, they said no later than summer 2021. So th that opens up a, a whole lot of space, Lindsay. You're a former Olympic gold medalist, 1996 Games in Atlanta. What would the decision process be like for a player, say, to choose between the Olympics and a, and a big-time, big-points event on the WTA or ATP? So much has to depend on where a player is in their career. Have they won an Olympic medal before? How important is it to them? Do they want to travel uh, to Asia in the middle of the summer again? That was already going to be a question in 2020. So I think for every player, it's very individual how seriously they take the Olympics. Maybe after missing this year, all the prize money, the, maybe we don't get all four Grand Slams played. Maybe the players choose to play on the regular tour because they want a chance to earn prize money, ranking points, or, or maybe a Grand Slam will conflict with the Olympics. So much is up in the air. I'm also curious to see if that means anything for this summer. Does Wimbledon push back a few weeks? Does Indian Wells try and get in somewhere this calendar? It's just a mess right now. And because we don't know the end, it's still going to be up in the air for a while. You know, I think Lindsay took, makes such a great point about the end. When I flip-flop that and I look at it as the beginning, we don't know when the beginning is going to be, the beginning of the new start. And and I think that's one of the reasons um, why the Olympics had to just postpone and not redate it, because we don't know what's going to start. Is it going to be in July? Is it going to be September? Is it 2020 going to be a wash? I mean, there are so many unanswered questions. So to begin to plan makes it extremely difficult. Uh, again, I always revert back to let's deal with the major issue first. Let's prioritize what the major issues are. And then once we have those kind of on a timeline and an imaginable, manageable scenario, that's when we then go down the line and start planning and rescheduling and plugging tournaments into different dates. And remember, the on the ATP tour, these dates um, – right now are fixed for the tournaments that they have over the summer and after the U.S. Open. So we're talking about trying to figure out, can we figure out a way to play Indian Wells again? Uh, we saw kind of Roland Garros's um, jump to grab a couple weeks. What does that mean? I mean, there's still so many presumptions and speculative processes. I, I think it's a little bit premature, um, but for me, the sooner the better. Well, let's go back to that with Roland Garros, John, because it was one week ago today. Uh, I mean, a lot has happened since then, but one week ago today that Roland Garros came out and said, we are rescheduling September 20th to October 4th. That ruffled a whole lot of feathers, but we've had a week to kind of let it sink in. How are all these tennis powers feeling about it now? Well, I think it fits into this discussion we're having that, look, I mean, as you say, a lot of feathers were ruffled by that. 
as much because it was unilateral as anything else. But if you want to reschedule the French Open, it's one of the pillars of the sport. I think most people would say, yes, let's try to do that. But the fact that the FFT said, listen, here are the dates. We think you're going to come. And if you're not too bad, that was something we haven't seen before in this sport. But what that did, and you're right, that was only a week ago, that set a new precedent. This is now a land grab. This is everyone for themselves. And now suddenly, we have some dates and we have some dates opening and we have some flux here. So I think what the FFT did, I think, look, there's still going to be some blowback for that. I think there's still some very upset tours that weren't consulted. We've talked about the Labor Cup. We've talked about the other majors. But I think what that did, that declared it open season on the calendar. And now, as Lindsay says, everything is in flux and the Olympics only adds to this. And if, in fact, to, to Paul's point, I mean, let's just be clear. This all presupposes that this health crisis goes away. So let's sort of keep that in mind that we know nothing about how COVID-19 and coronavirus is going to play out. If we're fortunate enough to be in a spot, though, where we're getting back out there and some of these restrictions are lifting, suddenly there are some very attractive dates on the calendar that are open. And the FFT has set this precedent of, listen, it's every event for themselves. Yeah, and, and with an event like that, Lindsay, right, it, it's one of the majors. As, as a tennis player, I'm assuming that those are the four jewels. That's what you're playing for. So no matter what else is on the calendar during that time, unless there were two majors at the same time, which I don't think could ever happen, you would, as a player, choose the major, right? I would think so. And for the top players, that's what they're playing about. So much of the focus about greatest of all time, the stats, it's all about majors. How many majors can you win? But even if you go down the rankings, I mean, prize money for the first round of a major is what, around 50 grand? No player right now can afford not to play that. They wanted that opportunity to get more prize money, especially when you consider they're going to be out of earning from right around March 1st to who knows when. They're going to want that opportunity to go play in a Grand Slam, no matter when it is. And, and those those monetary conversations are so challenging, particularly for the players that aren't fortunate to have uh, huge bank accounts and huge rankings that have guaranteed them a lot of money throughout their career. I think the challenge for the players in both tours is really going to be about, you know, the process and grappling with the process, grappling with uh, FFT's decision to just kind of grab those couple weeks um, what does it mean for the U.S. Open? What does it mean for Wimbledon? Wimbledon's having talks right now about what they're going to do and what their possibilities are. Um, so there's still that's just the three majors. Then you have all of the other events that are owned by um, the proprietors for both of the tours. So, look, we're trying to put a jigsaw puzzle together, but all the pieces aren't even out of the box yet. So we just have to take a deep breath and uh, let things play out a little bit um, and hope for the best. I have to always hope for the best. And by the way, getting these three majors in, Wimbledon, U.S. Open, Roland Garros, well, uh, I Googled the weather in New York and London and Paris in the fall, and basically you can't play past October. So that's kind of the deadline for the three remaining Grand Slams of 2020. John, pleasure having you join us, as always, on Tennis Channel Live, and we will see you soon. You got it. Thanks, guys.